How goes it for you? It's been great. It's been good? Yeah. Having a good time? Yeah. Rock and roll? Cool, I, cool, cool? That's what I was saying. I love these. Uh, I mean, obviously, it's fun to do a whole weekend show, but it's fun to do the, the one-day shows because I get to sleep in my bed ah, with my cats and feed my cats in the morning. Then I, I fly to, like, a mini vacation, then go back home, feed my cats dinner, and they, it's like... It's like not even skipping a beat. Yeah, for them. They, they're they less angry with me. When I go out of town for a weekend, sometimes they'll, like, you know, tell me they're angry by, like, meowing at me, but then won't let me pet them. Or they will, like, sit on top of my suitcase and won't let me open it. Yeah, we have a we have a 70-pound pit that... Uh, oh, He's, wow. I call him the big doofus. And, Aww. Uh, you know when he's upset with you because he just like won't look at you. You're like, yeah. Like, What's going on, Milo? And he's just kind of like, you weren't here. Yep, <laughs> that's them. My cat will just sit in the corner to stare at you like she's judging at you. Yep. Daggers. Zemi's really good at that, and Zemi will meow in the tiniest little voice. And then when I go, okay, oh, let me pet you, he's like, no, <laughs> oh no. <laughs> no, no, you, yeah. you, you, you haven't earned that right this. yet. <laughs> you left. You went away. <laughs> yeah. So now they won't be mad at me. It's gonna be there great. You know. So you're like in and in, in and home, like out and back. In yeah, a day. yeah. So uh, I was up. I woke up this morning because I was I was afraid I was going to miss my flight. So I woke up at four. I did not need to wake up at four. I could have probably woken up at five and been fine. Um, and then I'll be home tonight at like nine thirty or ten. There you go. Yeah. Not bad. Yeah. No, it's great. Oh, cool. And I get to go to a completely different city and hang out with people. It's there you great. go. Yeah. Awesome. I'd suggest places to go, but they're, you know. They're I know. I heard about the Paws Animal Sanctuary. Yeah, yeah. That I would love to go to next time. Next time. Ooh, what? What's it called? Phil Tate. Just dump the road in Lincoln? My mom is going to have to go there with me. That's fine. That's way cool. All cats uh-huh. all the time. Well, welcome, everybody. How you doing? Hey, hey. Good. <laughs> Doing all right. <laughs> I'm excited to be here. Yeah, it's been a it's a been a while since I've gotten to come to the Sacramento area. So yeah, it's it's been a little. I think the yeah. last time you were here, uh, you were. With Bryce and we were doing something about sword art. Yeah, and then uh, I I think the last sack anime we uh, we did a bunch of sword art stuff, and then um, we filmed Confessionals, Ooh. which was way cool. Yeah, so if you worked on that, thank you. By the way, it is still on YouTube, and we took it to a film festival in Jersey. And Ooh, like, Jersey, yeah. exotic locations. Yeah, it was great, and the it the Garden was nominated State. for like ten awards. Ah. Yeah. And we won one. Hey, better hey. than nothing, right? There were so many, like, I think they said there were 130 web series in the wow. festival. And so we were like, to be nominated for 10 is like insane. That's pretty good. Yeah. And you won one. Which one did you win? We won Best Actress in a Comedy. Yeah. Nice. Good job. Yeah. So what else have you been up to? Uh, a lot of a uh, lot of games. Anybody playing Fire Emblem Three Houses? That was way fun. Uh, so I got to play Rhea in that, um, and then hopefully um, working on more P5 uh, Royal soon, ish. Um, and then uh, I did um, Red Blood Cell in Cells at Work. Yay! I had so much fun with that. And then I'm working on a couple other projects uh, right now that are still at the, like, if you talk about it, we will find you and we will lock you in a closet. <laughs> no, NDAs are getting harsh these days. They're getting real harsh. Although, like, it's interesting that anybody, when I say, like, oh, we'll lock you in a closet, another voice actor is like, that's really, like, really dark. I go, we go to record in a padded room every day. <laughs> they do lock us in in a closet equivalent. <laughs> we voluntarily walk in. This time they just won't give us water. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, who has questions for Sharon? Out up front? Oh. Um, my question is, if you were to meet Bryce Dallas Howard, who would you pick? Ooh, so I, I would, first of all, have to ask her some of the real hard-hitting questions. First of all, I would need to know how I get my own horologium. I mean, I know there's only one key, but I just, like, we share the same voice. Could we at least share the same keys? Because I'm just thinking, like, 
at a renaissance festival where it's super hot outside it would be really convenient to have horologium and maybe put some air conditioning in and like have him walk around um it would also be very helpful uh when on vocal rest to have horologium do the talking for me that would be great uh but i also would want to talk to her about her feelings regarding natsu just to know uh yeah and um I would, I would tell her, like, don't listen to Happy. You are perfect. You are perfect just the way you are. Um, but, yeah, I'd, I want, I'd want to get a party together so I could hang out with all the, with all the keys. Like, all the, all the spirits would be w really fun. But I'd have to keep her close to me because some of them are a little scary. And not scary in the sense that they're terrifying, but, like, cancer is just, like, scissors of flying makes me really nervous. So... Oh, Aquarius is also very, very dark uh, in how she talks to Lucy. But then when I worked, uh, did the, the, the infamous scene later in the show, um, Jessica Kavanaugh, who voices Aquarius, we did a commentary together. And Jessica was like, it's been so great working on the show. I really love Lucy and I love working with Jeremy. And I started crying because I'm like, this is so sweet. Aquarius loves Lucy. This whole time we didn't know. Um, so yeah, w that's probably what would happen. It would just be like long lost sisters and we'd just cry for 20 minutes. That's probably what would happen. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, yes. Like, I don't think I've found a director or an actor uh, that I've... Most of the voice actors in anime, we don't get to be in the same room with each other. So I've worked with their voices sometimes, but a lot of the times I've never met them. Um, so when I do get to meet them, it's really like at conventions, like that whole exchange with Trina and I. That's really our exchange with the other voice actors we work with coming out of a booth like, hey, nice to meet you. Oh, oh, you're playing my husband in the show. Cool, cool, <laughs> pleasure. Um, so that was my first encounter meeting Bryce. I was, he was leaving and I was walking into the booth and Alex Von David, who is a fantastic writer and director, um, he said, oh, you guys, uh, don't meet Asuna. And I was like, oh, hi, hello. Um, and then I met him actually at SAC Anime the first time I got to come and met his wife. And uh, I, I say this is probably not the best way to, you know, talk to your coworkers, uh, spouse but I was like uh, you are amazing I love you and, he, and I told him later I was like your wife is really cool and he goes I mean I, I'm cool too I was like y you're fine your wife is awesome <laughs> um, and uh, no he's great but like his wife is one of my best friends we're just like get along really well so um, yeah I, I get along with everybody that I get the opportunity to work with if I get to see them in person because that rarely happens uh, when I work on camera with people it's a little bit easier because we get to we're like trapped at camp for one month to three months and we become everybody's best friends and lifelong friendships uh, but I'm to be honest everyone's like what's your favorite character what's your favorite director I have want auditioned for so many things in the 26 years that I've been an actor that I have not gotten cast in that I'm just so happy to get a job that every director that I get to work with I feel so grateful that I get to work with them and every actor that I get to work with I'm like man we won the lottery that we are the crew that got to work on this project that we are the cast that got to work on this project and we we all take that very seriously I think everybody knows what it's like to not get the job that when we do get the job we all are like Guys, we're all best friends. Isn't this so cool? Isn't this like magical? So uh, short answer, and I know it's a stupid Miss America cop out answer, but I love all of them. <laughs> Thank you. Uh -huh. Sir? Hello. Um, uh, what, I know you've done a lot of like big roles and like roles that are very uh, well known in the community. What's like a role you've done or a show you've done or a game you worked on that's like really good but you don't think uh, you'd like more people to know about it like underrated Ooh, um, man what is I'm trying to think of something that I worked on well I 
it's hard to say what's underrated because sometimes people will bring me things and I'll say, nobody ever brings me this. They're like, this is the greatest show ever. Uh, and so when I say it's underrated, they're like, everybody loves this show. Um, I loved working on a show called Ghost Hunt. Um, that was really fun. And that was like the first time I got to be like a lead lead. Um, I guess Cy and Peach Girl was a lead, but she was also like really mean. Uh, so when I was like a lead and I was not making people hate themselves, uh, and that was really cool. And, um, everybody kept telling me that I looked like that character and I love all things paranormal. So that was really fun to get to work on that. I also, the first time I got to voice a boy character was in Oedo Rocket and, uh, he looks like he's wearing, um, a cantaloupe on his head. So I refer to him as Melonhead. Um, he is charming and adorable and I had a lot of fun with that. Um, I'm trying to think like, mm, those are really fun. I'm trying to think of shows that like nobody knows. Shiki was a great show. I loved working on that. Psychopaths was a great show. But there's like, there's like, you guys know, there's pockets of fandom when you meet them. They're like, this is not underrated. This is the greatest show ever made and we all love it. Uh, and that's what's one of my favorite things about anime. And when I love getting to meet people and go to see people at conventions yeah it's awesome when everybody loves the most popular shows that there's the most merch for but it's really great when people come up and bring you something that said that they say I couldn't find any art for this and that happened today somebody brought me a character from is this a zombie and they said I had to look everywhere for art from the show and uh it was really cool to to get to see that people love the shows that uh sometimes were older or didn't resonate with everybody as much. A show that we loved working on that we thought was going to be really popular that Funimation kind of like said, nobody likes it, so we're going to stop dubbing it was um, Sergeant Frog. And that was way fun to work on. Um, so that is probably the underrated that nobody knew was underrated show. I guess nobody was watching it. And then as soon as, as, soon as Funimation was like, we're not dubbing this anymore, everybody's like, where's more Sergeant Frog? <laughs> So they had to just give it a little bit of time. But, I mean, that happens in entertainment all the time where everybody cancels a TV show and you're like, guys, let it get past two episodes before you decide everybody hates it. People have jobs. We're going to watch it later. Um, I don't know. That's a hard question. But those are, those are three that I feel like I love and I miss. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Um, is there any like meaningful difference between LA dubbing and, and uh, uh, Texas based dubbing? Um, well, a lot. When I worked in Texas, I really only worked at Funimation. I haven't worked at Sentai, and then and then when I worked for Rooster Teeth, I was living in LA, so I recorded at an LA studio. So I guess the biggest difference there is in Texas, when I was there, it was just the one studio. So you knew exactly where you were going to work every day. Um, and it was easier to schedule things because it was the same person scheduling things. Um, when you're in LA, you could be recording in Burbank. You could be recording in Marina Del Rey, which is an hour and a half away from Burbank. You could be recording um, or go if you're going to see somebody at Atlas that is like, past where Disneyland is so that could be two to three hours depending on traffic so that's probably the biggest difference for me is traffic uh, because so much of our job is like you get in you get in your car you drive to the studio you record for X amount of time and then you have to budget uh, enough time to get to the next session maybe you'll get to eat that day if it's a busy day you guys think I'm kidding. Uh, Robbie posted a video. Uh, Robbie Damon posted a video. I don't know if you guys saw it. Where it was like, will Robbie get to eat between his session? And I was like, that is not a joke. And someone was like, someone's like, Wait, why is he joking about eating food? I was like, this is real life. I have packets of almond butter in my purse at all times. Because I'm like, I need protein. I'm eating almond butter. So they made a joke at one of the sessions I was at. He said, are you eating almond butter in the booth right now? I was like, no. <laughs> is that... Is that a problem? He's like, just don't have almond butter in your mouth when you do the take, and it's fine. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's probably the biggest difference uh, is making sure that you can get to work because, I mean, you guys know living in California, traffic does not make any sense. And California and Texas is pretty bad. Uh, traffic in Texas is pretty bad, too, but not as bad. Um, and uh, I guess there's... Uh, 
being that there's one company that's dubbing so many shows versus various studios that have a couple shows going at one time, um, you might be working, like there were times where I was working at Funimation all the time and they were doing all the auditions and then there were times where I was like, well, I'm only cast on one show and I would only go into work for that one show. In LA, you could be not working at one studio for six to eight months, but you're working on one show or two shows at six to eight other studios and you're still able to make a living. Whereas if you're not working in the one studio at Funimation, like you've got to, you've got to supplement your income or get another job. So that's kind of the, the trick there. But as far as like the logistics of dubbing, we have two screens at both. We have a director, we have an engineer. Um, we're in a padded box with a window. Uh, all of those things are always consistent. Hey. Um, um, so for SAO, I mean, I have stuff from SAO, obviously. Okay. Um, I, kind of, I watched three seasons, and I finished the third season yesterday. Nice. I mean, both sub and dub. Oh, cool. I mean, like, why, why not? Yeah. So my question is, um, out of the three seasons, what's your favorite out of each? Oh, I love the first arc because that's like OG SAO and I love the the love story of Kirito and Asuna. I thought that was really sweet and I loved that arc. Um, from the second season, Mother Cesario was my fave and I think Mother Cesario arc and is sometimes tied with the Einkrad arc because I really loved working on it. And I loved Ordinal Scale. Um, as far as like for the new season, um, there wasn't a lot of Asuna in the season. I talked to the uh, producer at Anime Expo because they do the anime festival and, and the team from Japan came in. And um, that was really cool. I said, is Asuna coming back? He goes, her entrance is going to be really cool. I was like, all right, okay. Uh, I'll take it. So, I mean, the entrance of the second half might be my fave, but I really loved her disguise moment. I thought that was so cool. Me too. I'm so excited. I do not know what they're going to do at all. I said, can you give me a teaser? And they said, no, we heard your reactions are better when you have no idea. <laughs> so that's fair. Thank you. Have you driven or owned a Ford? Have I, have I driven where? Have you driven or owned a Ford car? Driven have I driven a or owned a Ford? Um... Oddly specific. My first car was a Chevy. Um, and then now I drive a Honda. But n here's the trick. I have worked on um, various on-camera projects. And it's every time I tell them I'm not, I don't love driving on camera because I have to pull the seat really close and like really raise the seat because I'm five feet even. And um, it never fails that they give me a, either a very expensive car or a very large car. And I am not comfortable driving either of those things. Um, I think I did drive a huge, like, the jacked up Ford truck in an episode of Longmire. I mean, guys, this was huge. They had to give me a stepladder to get into it. And then give me blankets to sit because I couldn't see over the dash. <laughs> and they couldn't, they were filming me in the window. My character got pulled over, which also happens in like three of the on-camera projects that I've gotten cast in. Um, but the character pulls me over and they were like, we got to give her blankets. We can't see her face through the window. So that I said, well, look, guys, I, I, my feet are dangling. Like I, they are not touching the ground or the pedals. So just know that I cannot drive either into the shot or out of the shot. They were like, no, 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 no. We don't want you to drive this. I was like, also, I'm not comfortable driving this boat of a vehicle. <laughs> and, uh, and then at the very last minute, the director was like, hey, could you just like start the car and just pull out? And I was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> And they were like, it's fine, it's fine, it's, just make it work, we'll guide you. And I was like, this is terrible. So um, I slid off the blankets, literally cannot see. And I'm like, guys, I'm going left. 
And it's just, they just needed the exit, so there's no uh, no sound in that shot, and um, I can't see anything. And I had to do the same thing driving a an old, like, Volkswagen bus in a movie, and they're like, we're not going to have you drive out of the shot. And I was like, I've heard that before. <laughs> the very end, they were like, the actor's going to jump in through the window. We need you to start m moving the car, like, just r at a rolling pace. He's going to jump in through the window, and then you're going to take off up a hill in Pittsburgh. And it was snowing, and I couldn't see anything. So the actor's face is, like, in the seat, and he's going, guys, please help us. Is there a car on the right or the left? We can't see anything. It was terrifying. <laughs> but yes, I have driven a Ford, I guess, for a brief time. Voice, uh, Sailor Venus for a Ford. Yeah, we d and we d got to do the Sailor Venus Ford commercial, or the Sailor Moon uh, Guardians Ford commercial. That was really fun. I never thought that would ever happen, but it was cool. This, um, if you Pick ask, your favorite child. Yeah, pretty much. Um, if you ask my family, they will say she has a different favorite by the moment. And that's kind of true. But there is a reason behind it. Because when I'm in the booth and I'm living in that, like, universe, that one is, like, fresh on my mind and that's my favorite. And so then I call my mom and my husband and I'm probably breaking NDA rules. But I'm like, we got to do this scene today. And it was like this is why I love acting, and this, like, this really spoke to me. And they're like, we have no idea what you're talking about. Right. I'm like, and that's why she's my favorite character. And then the next session, like two hours later or four hours later, I'm like, guys, you'll never guess what happened, and this is why this is my favorite character. So my favorite character is the most recent one that I have voiced. <laughs> and so my favorite character right now is a character I cannot tell you guys about that I voiced yesterday. So sorry. I can't tell you. <laughs> I can't tell you who or what it's from. Ooh, okay. So what did I work on before that one? Okay, that was a, um, we're, going, we're going back to Monday because I can't talk about anything that I worked on Tuesday through Friday. <laughs> on Monday, I uh, worked on Boruto. So it was Sarada. Yeah. Today's program brought to you by NDA yeah, and the number exactly. four. Exactly. My gosh. Makes me so paranoid when people like send me a message on on Twitter or Instagram. I've had people say, like, I've messaged you, you never responded. I'm like, guys, I was terrified. You asked me what if I liked working on such and such a show, and I was like, How do you even know about that? Am I allowed to know that I know about that? <laughs> so if I don't get back to you, it's because I'm terrified, not because I'm avoiding you. And not because I'm terrified of you. I'm terrified of the royal they <laughs> who will come find me and lock me in a closet. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> Ooh, my favorite part of the game to voice. Uh, oh, it's so hard. We worked on that for months and months and months. So uh, all the dating stuff with Joker was really fun, sometimes awkward because, you know, um, it's awkward being in a relationship and going through all that stuff sometimes. Uh, but I really liked the scene where uh, Makoto said, I, uh, I'm going to go, I'm trying not to spoil things if anybody hasn't played the game. Um, so there's a, there's a guy that we're trying to change his heart because he's making poor choices. And she decides that she's going to go to like a not so great part of Japan and like be an undercover agent without the support of a team that is also undercover to have her back. Um, and that was probably my favorite because I was like, man, I've always wanted to be an undercover cop. But I would not be a very good undercover cop unless it was like, can you go be an undercover cop in like high school <laughs> or college? I could maybe do that. But I would need somebody to have my back because I would get myself into some pretty terrible situations, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was awesome. Um, I loved working on that game. And I did not know at the time because I didn't here they didn't play any of the voice lines for me and with the game we record separately i did not know that the whole time i was like 
acting with my really good friend, Amanda Miller, who plays Junko in the game. And so when I found out later, I was like, Amanda, you and I just spent like 20 hours hanging out together and we spend our real waking life texting each other saying, are we going to be able to see each other in the next six months? <laughs> like, this is a missed opportunity, man. Also, Bryce got to be my brother, which was awesome. So now he's been my boyfriend, my brother. I've been his mom. He has not, he has not played my dad yet. We're still waiting. <laughs> One day. Now we need therapy. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, yes. So this is kind of a fact and also maybe a question. Okay. okay. So you voice in Persona. Uh -huh. Okay, I haven't played the game. But okay. I do know that. So Persona is actually based off of like Jungian psychology. Um, did, you, did you actually like know that? I did, awesome. yeah. Awesome. Um, so it's also like why it's called Persona and they have like the masks and stuff. Yeah. I'm curious, like, did you like know that going into the game or did you learn that through like voicing your character and like well, help you? I, when I first got cast in the game, they did not tell me what I was working on because I can't be trusted. Um, so I went in and they said, so we're, we're, um, we've already cast you. These are the characters in this project. And they told me a little bit about all the characters. And then they explained Makoto. And I was like, man, it'd be really cool to play her. But I'm assuming that I'm just here because I was pre-cast that uh, I'm assuming I'm just playing like a random you're going to do all these cleanup bits for us. And I was like, okay, so what do you need me to do today? And they said, you're playing Makoto. And that was all I got going in. It's like, this is kind of who this character is. We didn't know anything about her persona. And um, then as we started working on <laughs> the show, I was like, this is deep. Like, this is like dealing with a lot of therapy stuff for all these characters. And they said, well, I mean, yeah, that's part of the game. And I said, cool, what is the game? Because <laughs> um, you have told me nothing. Um, and then I realized as I was leaving sessions, I would be thinking about the, um, like the palaces that we were recording for that day and like what those characters were dealing with and like the deeper meanings behind it and the emotional things. And as I'm like unpacking my emotional baggage and Makoto's emotional baggage, by the way, don't do that while you're driving. Um, <laughs> I learned that the hard way. Um, but yeah, I was like, man, this is really deep and so that's how I ended up talking to them and I was like so is there like a psychological element to this game because it's like I said I almost got into a car accident because I was like thinking about like well that person that I know that is dealing with a lot of stuff what would their palace look like and then that would lead to something else and luckily traffic is really bad in LA so we sat at a standstill but if we were driving like at full speed I would have been very unsafe so yeah I figured it out as we were working on the game because I was like, I love school and I love to learn. And so I'm like, tell me everything there is to know about this project. I want to learn everything. And they'll say, well, this is irrelevant. You don't need to know this. Oh, the character doesn't. And I don't need to know that for my job. But I, as a human being, will be more enriched if you please give me this information. <laughs> so, yeah. I'm glad you know that. That's really cool. Um, so just to touch back in on again, You voiced Kamaru in the game, but you didn't like come to return to voice her in Danger on the Three. Although people like Bryce did. Mm -hmm. Is there like a deep reason for that? Like did you not audition for? Um so the deep reason is uh I was working on the game while they were working on the anime. And um Funimation licensed the anime. The game was done by a completely different company and it was being dubbed in LA or it was, yeah, it was being, we were recording it in LA. So because everything was top secret for the game and everything was under NDA, they didn't know that the game was being recorded while they were working on the anime. So they just assumed this character had never been voiced. So they were like, oh, well, we'll just take an actress who's already here and Bryce was working on Attack on Titan at that time and had played his character in the game and they said cool then we can have you come back and play that character um, as far as why some of the other characters didn't return I heard it was because the simul dub schedule was so quick they did not have source connect like they do now to be able to work with the actors that live in New York and the actors that live in LA and they had to crank out an episode in a week and they were like these actors are so busy in LA there's no way they're going to be able to come out and record the amount of hours that they need so they just recast everybody um, 
but I did talk to the director and he's like, I didn't know you were in the game. I asked if that character had been cast and everyone was like, no, we don't know anything about the game. That's how we don't know anything going on at all like I'm doing right now. So it could happen again because everything is so tight-lipped with a game that we're recording if they're working on the anime at the same time that there would be different actors just because everybody is so terrified to give any sort of information. So that was, that was the deep reason, just everybody keeping secrets. So um, I did a convention once, and they said, you play a lot of characters with swords, and it would be really cool if we did a panel. We have a swordsmith that makes katanas, and so he's going to teach everybody how to wield a katana, and everybody's going to get to use a practice katana. And usually um, for those classes, he dulls down the blade, but nobody told him that I was the size of a hobbit. (laughs) And... um, your Mm. weapon has to be proportionate to your body so he ended up giving me one that he had made for the class that um he's like the way i know that it's ready is that it can slice through a car door so that is what i was given to do this class and he's like it had never been uh it had never been unearthed from the sheath that it was in so he's like so you use one thumb to pop open the sheath obviously uh, the blade has to be up towards your thumb. And he was like, it's really snug, so just once it's popped open, just let it kind of sit there for a little while. And I was like, what if it starts to slide? He was like, don't even worry about it. It'll be fine. So we're in the class, probably five minutes in, it starts to slide. I don't want to disturb anything with the 20 to 30 people that are attendees also taking this class. And so as it starts to slide, I'm like, I'll catch it. It's fine. With my thumb. Um, And this young girl next to me is like, um, probably like 11 or 12, and she's like, you're bleeding. I was like, it's fine, shh, don't talk about it. Um, And so like, (laughs) the guy hears, she's bleeding, and I'm sitting right next to him, and he looks at my thumb, and the whole time I've been going, it's fine, like, it's not a big deal. So it looks like I've murdered a small animal, because I'm like, like trying to look like, it's fine, it's fine, but there's blood everywhere. (laughs) And so he takes the weapon, thankfully, because I cannot be trusted. Um, And then somebody runs out to go tell the head of the convention. And I'm like, guys, it's fine. It's just a flesh wound. Nobody laughs. And I was like, cool. I'm literally bleeding for you guys. Could you just, like, laugh at a joke? This is very awkward. Um, And he goes, go get some super glue. I'm like, it's my thumb. Not like, you know. A vase that someone broke. Um, but we, I learned that day that uh, in World War II, they used super glue to heal wounds faster. So, I mean, it worked fine. There's not That'll even a triage. scar on my thumb. You can't tell. Um, but he ends up, like, going through the whole thing. And then he says, uh, so, at the end of the class, I'm bleeding. We had the head of the con come by and be like, where is it? I was like, where is what? He was like, the thumb. I've got ice. And, like... <laughs> By the time it got to the head of the con, like, Jeremy's thumb was gone. And, like, we was, like, 20 minutes later. I don't think that we could have saved the thumb by that point. Luckily, that's not what happened. Um, But uh, my hand was, like, all bloody. And then he tells me, he's like, you know, gives this whole story about, uh, I think he was trying to make me feel better. Um, But... um, there are great samurai in Japan, and the way they would know that a sword was right for them is if, it, if the sword bit them. And he was like, so the sword bit you, so this one is now yours. And I'm like, uh, it's like the wand choosing the wizard, but this is a very violent uh, wand. I don't, I can't have this. Um, and so I still have this katana. It's somewhere in my parents' house. Um, we had to ship it back because good luck getting that on a plane. Um, so, uh, yeah, it was a very interesting weekend. But, yes, after, long story short, no, I have not touched a sword, foam or otherwise, since then. <laughs> I do not trust myself. Um, for a while, the guy was like, I could get you training with somebody who worked on uh, Mortal Kombat. And I was like, that'd be fun. 
And then I was like, that's terrible. <laughs> like, I have this thing in my hand for five seconds. You start giving me, like, actual, like, knowledge and skill. It would be like a, like a bridesmaid spoof of this girl's, like, I'm a real samurai. Like, just takes off everybody's head like a comedic Kill Bill. <laughs> uh, that... I, I, oh yeah, if I, if I do that, guys, I will make sure to get somebody to follow me around because that's going to be an accident waiting to happen and I can't wait to share it with the world. Um, but yeah, no, other than that, I have not, not picked up a sword. Maybe one day when I'm feeling more confident. But the, like all the emotional stuff, yeah, I'm all, I'm all for. The violent, like, like I'll take any sort of class necessary as long as there's not like a, a weapon involved that I could cause harm to another person. To myself, it's fine, but if another life is at stake, that's terrible. I can't do that. <laughs> uh, uh, so what's it like doing characters like uh, Uli Haru from the uh, Tawaru series, where you kind of have to record like a couple of lines every year? Yeah, it's so weird. Um, I love her. I call her my human chia pet, because I don't know where those flowers on her head come from. Um, but I was in town um, uh, last week in Texas, and uh, I was recording Fairy Tale, and we were doing something else fun for a Fairy Tale that you guys will find out about soon. Um, and then uh, they said, "And by the way, we have Railgun for you." And I said, "What?" She came in, she had, like you said, three lines. And I said, "So is she coming back?" They go, "Do we ever know?" <laughs> so it's great. I'm glad to see she's thriving and living her life. I wish I knew a little bit more about what was going on in her life. We'll see. They cut her best scene from the anime and it's still upset. What? Well, maybe we'll see it. Maybe they'll have a whole season of just things that got cut and our dream will come true. <laughs> well, I would not be surprised with that show. Okay, so Fairy Tales my favorite. But if you couldn't voice Lucy, who would you want to voice? So when I auditioned for the show, I did not audition for Lucy because I thought Lucy was really cool and I thought there was no way I would get cast. So I auditioned for Happy and I auditioned for Urza and I auditioned for Levy. Um, and then the director was like, I think you should read for Lucy. And I said, I think you're really mean because I would really like to be a part of Fairy Tale. Don't rub it in. Um, and so then that's why Lucy sounds like me is it was just me talking was my audition. Um, uh, who would I voice if I was not Lucy? I want to be a cat of some sort. I w wait, but I, I'm making up a character. I want to be a uh, Panther Lily's like annoying niece or nephew, <laughs> like that just shows up and harasses Panther Lily, because I love Panther Lily. Yeah, yeah. G give uh, give some comic relief to Panther Lily. There's not enough Panther Lily. It's a good thing you didn't have to do s get stitches for that. That is very true. Just some super glue. Speaking of blood, you play a new series called Selmer. Yeah. I'm so excited to hear. I Ooh, good job with that full circle moment. That was awesome. <laughs> I hope next Saturday, when it's winter, I'm going to ask for a panel for Ooh, I would love that. I would love for the whole Cells at Work cast to hang out. We had way too much fun working on that show. We did have a doctor who was a consultant on the show who would watch all of the episodes and say, that is not how you say that, <laughs> or that is not how the body works. So everything should be accurate. We refer to the doctor as Dr. Anaplex. That is not his name. Wait, so there are I believe there are, yeah. And on those days that I don't eat, I think to myself, oh, those poor little red blood cells, what have I done to them? <laughs> yeah, but honestly, it is terrifying. Like, it is, it, uh, we, we, we went through this journey while I was recording. I was like, wait, so the red blood cells, now are the red, cell, red blood cells within the red blood cells? And the director was like, don't, don't, we don't have enough time to go down this path. <laughs> We have to get a certain amount of cues done today. Um, but honestly, if you think about it, all of those like little things or big things that happen to the body, we're like very concerned. And like that was considered a healthy body. Like that's a rough week. Like all, I'm like, man, what is this person doing on the regular? They're cutting themselves on the floor. 
You, <laughs> oh my God, that's me. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Uh, so you play the Asian word too. Yes. Uh, what are the side stages? Who's your favorite Ooh. So I hung out with um, the voice of Maya, Martha. And because I just saw her, I feel like I must choose Maya. <laughs> it's my diplomatic answer, so none of the other vault hunters kill me. <laughs> They'll be like, well, then I guess I just have to hang out with Sherry more. And I'm like, yep, it's all a pawn to get more friends. Yeah, totally. How long do you I don't think Asuna would get mad at Happy. I don't think she would break. I think Yui would show up and be like, you need to leave my parents alone. <laughs> you are too much. Um, and then Happy would be like, well, I want to come hang out in your world then. And then Happy would get lost. And then Natsu and Lucy have to come into the game to come find Happy. And then we have a really fun crossover. <laughs> Todd actually would just be like, Great, cool. Does Oberon get to show up and talk to Natsu? Oberon does not get, Oberon is not welcome anymore. He is done. Like, really done, if you haven't seen that part of this series. <laughs> yes. If, uh, how do you feel about fairy tale coming to an end? I'm really sad if it's actually true. I don't believe it's really true. Um, I was very, very clear on my stance in New York when we did um, the celebration of the final season. And I was like, I don't know why we're calling it the final season. It's clearly not the final season. We're going to get an announcement halfway through the final season that we've got the 100-year quest anime and that we've got a spinoff. But we've got like less than 10 episodes left if you're watching the simul dub, and no announcement has been made. So I'm now panicking because I've had very, st like, I've been very convinced, and uh, now I'm not so sure. And so, like, now I'm getting really nervous. But I will say, when we finished the last season, before coming to the final season, um, I cried on the way home, and I was like, well, I guess we might not do the final season, and if this is the end, I'll say goodbye to Lucy. Um, and then the, this so, says how long it was. There was a song, uh, I Will Never Forget You, that was playing on the radio. And then the next song that came on right after was like, I'm coming back or something like that. And I was like, <laughs> okay. So the, the vibe I'm getting from the universe is that fairy tale is coming back. At least that's what they said last time via the music. So hopefully it comes back. I think we've got time for one more question. Sir? What was the very first anime that you ever did voice acting? Ooh, uh, first anime ever was Peach Girl, and that was my first audition at Funimation, and I got cast as Sai, who is a horrible, mean girl. <laughs> and uh, I had just graduated from high school, and I was bullied in uh, high school and middle school. So to get to be the other half of the mean girl I went into it being like everybody that's a bully is horrible and then after playing the bully I was like well I didn't understand what those girls were dealing with in their life and maybe they were they felt like I had something that they didn't and so I reached out to one of the girls on Facebook and she was like yeah I was really I was really jealous that your mom was always there my mom worked all the time and your mom was always around and I didn't think that was fair and I'm sorry I took that out on you and I was like oh I'm sorry I Thought you were a horrible person. <laughs> you still were really mean to me. Um, and uh, it, like we, we now share an anniversary. We got married on the exact same day. It's very, very weird. But I'm like, playing a mean girl helped me like uh, have some healing with one of the girls that harassed me, which is pretty great. So even playing the bad guy can make your life a little bit better. <laughs> oh, well, right on. I think that takes us kind of to where we're at. Hey. Sweet. So cool. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, Big applause guys. for Sharon Thank me. You. Thank you.